What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Summer Career Mode, it is episode number 23, it's also the season finale as we wrap up our third season and our first season in the top tier today as well. Uh, as we know, especially on the back of the win against Aston Villa, mathematically we can't go down, 10 clear of the bottom three, got a game in hand as well and we can't finish in a European spot. So basically, where are we going to finish in mid-table? Can we sneak into the top 10 or would it be somewhere between 11th and 14th? I guess we'll see today. So our final four games, we're, we're going to get through these really quickly man. Our first game is Leicester at the Medeski Stadium, aiming for back-to-back wins and our first win in Berkshire in a while as we do try and keep our top 10 hopes alive. Come on, you Royals. You know, I often get asked about playing the games and why I don't simulate. And as I've mentioned before, as Reese Nelson turns on the afterburners and finishes as well, excellent run and solo goal from the former gunner. Um, honestly, like it's just personal preference. It really is. There is no right or wrong way to play this game, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I, I don't believe in gatekeeping. And whether you simulate most of the games, simulate all the games, or simulate none of the games, or just simulate a few games here or there, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just that, personally, I just prefer to play all the games. So even now, with four games to go, listen, there's, there's basically nothing at stake. I mean, there is nothing at stake, really. But the, the motivation I get to play comes from individual statistics we could be going for, like Bennett going for the Golden Glove or, you know, again, perhaps we're going for a team record or something. That's the motivation that gives me the... Um, I guess, inspiration to, to play all the games. But really, there, there's no right or wrong answer. Simulating, whether you simulate a lot or, again, simulate, you know, none. It, it Personal preference, really. You should play a game however you want to play it. It's a nice ball by Harvey out to Johnston. Got his first goal to the park. Bukhari dispossessed and goes down as well. And that kind of sums his season up, man. I think I'll rule him out for the final three games. He's got me a few goals this year, but I don't think there's any doubt about it. For the new season, he might keep the number nine jersey, but he won't be our starting number nine. New striker definitely required. Another game where we failed to score so far. Nelson, lovely cutback. He's been brilliant today. And Harry Winks makes it too. Well, it was great to bounce back with a win at Villa Park, but it's now going to be four losses in our last five games. I said this can often be the problem with achieving your goals a little early. When there's still things to do, you often start to feel complacent because the main thing, the main achievement has been achieved. Four losses in five, man. This is this is not the way we want to end the season. Gonna gonna have at least one more win in our final three. Right, following contest, penultimate home game of the season. Spurs in Berkshire. Got to win at least one of our final three, man. Seriously, I don't want to end on this shocking run. Let's get it here. Come on, you Royals. Yeah, I don't really know how to describe it, but you you do see it on occasion. You know, a team that was tipped to possibly be in a relegation scrap, survive a few games to go, and then they just take their foot off the gas, and it's like, well, we've done it now. It's like, well, yeah, granted we have, but there's still like six games to play. Do you know what I mean? We we still want to get some wins on the board if possible. As Reggie goes all the way. And McGree, oh, what a finish. And what a signing he's been on deadline day, man. Brought him into a replacement for Mukairu. But I've given him minutes, given him starts. He's not let me down. He's got four goals for me since coming in. Reggie to Aziz. And now Tapia, really well done now. I see McGree in the middle. Linked up for the first goal, Bond and Riley. Carbon copy. Oh, great save, Vicario. Played to him. Oh, I don't believe that it's gone in. Not for the first time in FC24. This is something I really hope EA look into for FC25. Pass backs to the goalkeeper. Often deceive the shot stopper. And roll past him into the back. And it's not the first time I've seen this this season. It's a brilliant save by Vicario initially. But Cancelo plays him back. When the goalkeeper is so close to the line. Oftentimes pass backs. They can't react on time. And get a clearance away. Oh that's so embarrassing man. Honestly Vicario is a heck of a goalkeeper man. But he'll want that one back. Can't blame Casello on that one. That's just terrible footwork and balance. But yeah, it's not the first time I've seen this in FC24, man. I hope EA have fixed that for FC25. Goalkeepers just can't deal with pass backs when they're so close to the goal line. Oh, I only have one win oh, to end the season, at least in our final three. We might well get it here. Vita Roque does give Spurs a chance. 12 to go, but like at Villa Park, we've let a two-goal lead slip to one. Just got to make sure we see it out from here. 
Yep, that is going to do it. Just like a Villa Park, we surrendered what would have been a clean sheet for Bennett, who's not kept many, to be fair, in this final third of the season. But we do hold on for a quite fortunate win, considering how the second goal came about. But it's also our first scalp against a top six side of the save as well. I could end the season happy now. I wanted at least one more win in our final four. We've got it against Spurs. Right, two more games to end the season then. Let's get through them quick. Uh, we still could finish in 10th place, but we need to win back-to-back -back and Brentford will lose to lose on the final day as well. But let's just try and finish strong. Final home game of the season, Everton on Wednesday night. Come on, you Royals. Well, not quite the way we wanted to end it our season in Berkshire this year, but for the first time in a while, back-to-back -back games without a loss and a clean sheet as well. Haven't I won an age? I don't know why the fans are so furious though. It's like, guys, we're guaranteed to finish mid-table. It's a point. I haven't lost any of our last two games. It's our final home game, and you're furious with the players for having safety locked up with games to go. EA have got to work on their crowd reactions, man, honestly. Ungrateful. And as we head into the final game of the season, and see we've had to give Alfonso Rodriguez a pro deal, and he shows the exciting prospect how. We'll try and get him loaned out for next season. Our final game, Man City away at the Etihad Stadium. Can't see us going our final three games undefeated, and our first scalp away from home against the top six side, but you never know. Even so, heading into the game, as often say, the final day of the season, nothing to play for. I only give a send-off to a few players that probably won't return, so just Elvin, Kamara, Nesta, and so on as well. Final game at the Etihad. Come on, you Royals. Yeah, it's always something I encourage you guys to do. If like, you head into the, the final game of the season, there's nothing to play for whatsoever. Again, perhaps for individual stats as well, not really anything at stake. Give, give, it, give a send-off to a few players that you probably won't see again. One, one last game with them, you know, so Ben Gay... Uh, you know, possibly, well, Wing for sure who's leaving to, to Norwich, Kamara, I don't know if Kelvin will be returning for next season as well as Hyung Min Son opens the scoring, especially in a game like this when you've got very little chance of winning as well. It's just a nice way to close the season out and uh, thank some players for their service as well, you know. It's been a very tough end of the season for Reading and it's going to finish with a loss as well. So it's going to be five defeats in our last eight games to end the season off and only two wins in eight as well. Like we said, man, that is the unfortunate downside of achieving safety with a few games to go. Oftentimes, teams would then take their eye off the ball with very little at stake. I mean, we weren't expecting to win this game anyway, but even so, it's still going to be adding to what is a poor end of season record. Still, I'm not going to say no to a mid-table finish at the start of the season. I would have bitten your hand off to get it, and that is what we have finished up with. But the winners of the Premier League in the end were indeed Arsenal, finishing six clear of Manchester. United to win the Premier League title this season the top scorers and the joint best defensive team as well with only two losses all season long uh, the Red Devil Spurs and Liverpool wrapped up the top four with Man City narrowly missing out in fifth place after a really tough start to the season for them uh, finishing fifth actually they were the top scorers uh, one clear of Arsenal uh, Newcastle sixth Chelsea seventh they wrapped up the European spots and Aston Villa Crystal Palace and Brentford are the top ten finishing teams West Ham and Liverpool we did indeed end up finishing in 12th place this season with a fantastic Fantastic defensive record. Only 35 goals conceded in our debut year, but you'd see the problem right there. Historically, one of the worst seasons for goals scored ever. Only 22 in 38 games. But we knew that was our problem this season. Just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. Next season, no doubt about it, we'll be going for a new striker. The bottom three in the end saw Burnley, Brighton and Sheffield United down to the championship. As for the Golden Boot this year, well, of course, he scored against us on the final day. Erling Haaland, no surprises, winning it free clear of Rasmus in second with Saka in third. Uh, any Reading players? Any Reading players? No, no, no one even got to double digits. Embarrassing, embarrassing. That's going to have to change. Uh, what a season for Bedrick on sales in terms of creativity, though. 16 assists in 37 games for the Gunners. Big reason why they were champions. Harley did get in the top 20, though, uh, with five. And Reggie also had five as well in 36 games in 23. First place, but after the Golden Glove, it's why I didn't need to start him on the final day. Bennett gets it in his debut year in the top tier, and that's why we finished mid-table. Forget about the goals scored, it was the fact we didn't concede many. 15 clean sheets in 37 for the teenage wonder kid as he wins that Golden Glove and his stock continues to rise. And that's why he was indeed the goalkeeper in the tournament, but you know, even if that's the case, he won't make the team of the season. It's something that EA do need to look in for next year. If your goalkeeper wins goalkeeper in the tournament... 
nine times out of ten, he doesn't make the team of the season. But Reggie made it. Reggie in the team of the season. Our only representative with O'Nana between the sticks. Reggie's there alongside Vardy, Old Limit Amand, uh, and Militao in the back four. Gonzalez, the assist title winner, is a Odegaard and Saka wrap up the midfield. And it is the top two scorers in the league. Hodgland and Haaland, uh, the strike duo, as it was Rasmus who won the player of the season as well. And so, as we take a look at some other competitions around the world, starting domestically with the Carabao and FA Cup. Well, for the League Cup this season, that was an Arsenal-Chelsea final where the Blues ran out winners by two goals to one. As for the FA Cup this season, we were, of course, knocked out in the third round by Chelsea. We were knocked out in the last 16 by Spurs. We were knocked out in the quarters by Arsenal. We were knocked out in the semis by Man City, who beat Fulham in the final by three goals to one to win the FA Cup this season. As for the Conference League, a couple of shocks in the last six but in the end, Newcastle managed to go all the way to the semis and make the final two just about overcoming the Danish side Copenhagen on their way to beating Sevilla uh, to win the Conference League by two goals to one this season in Europe's third tier competition, if you will. As for the Europa League in the last 16, it was a London derby where Spurs beat Chelsea to make the quarterfinals and he also made the semis by beating Marseille and made the final by thrashing Galatasaray but did come up short to AC Milan as the Italian side won the final uh, by two goals to one in the Europa League final. And as for the Champions League, now I've got to say, this is one of the most interesting seasons in the Champions League I have seen when not being a part of it myself. So as I run you through the entire group seal with a couple of big names getting knocked out in the Champions League group stage as well. Heading into the last 16, Porto stunned Liverpool at Anfield to make it through to the quarter finals. They also stunned Barcelona Barcelona at the new Camp to make the semis. They also stunned Arsenal to make the final. And Porto went all the way. Shades of 2004. Winning their third in history. Beating Man City in a five-goal thriller. A true underdog story. And I think the first time I've seen a non-five-star team win the Champions League. Shades of 2004 again. What a path to get there as well. The hardest road and then some. That's incredible. First time seen that. So Leeds and Bournemouth uh, back in the Premier League's top two in the Championship. The players will be Southampton, Luton, Coventry and uh, Watford in this year's Championship season. That's unbelievable, man. Again, first, I think first time I've ever seen that. First time I've ever seen a non-Firestar team winner. Uh, Stoke, uh, League One winners comfortably. Swansea in second and the playoffs Blackpool, Peterborough, uh, Rotherham United and Charlton in the third tier of the relegated teams being Wrexham, Steelers, Cheltenham Town and Cambridge. Now as for the fourth tier this season, MK Dons, Port Vale and Colchester, the top three or Mac Remote places and Mansfield Town, Tranmere, Gillingham and the Bantams will make the playoffs. Uh, this year's bottom place team in the Football League, Crew Alexandra. No shocks in League One, no uh, 20 points clear of the nearest challenger at PSG champions of the French top tier as usual. Oh my goodness, he still hasn't won it yet. He still hasn't won it yet. Leverkusen, champions of the Bundesliga and Bayern for the third straight year in the save have not been winners of the German top tier. Their dominance in German football is officially over and in the end, Val Hielemer's side did indeed finish rock bottom with only three wins all season long. He's going to come back either made as a really strong man or broken. I can't wait. Wow, domination in the Serie A. Don't often see this. Uh, Inter finishing a whopping, and I mean a whopping, 29 point clear of Juve and Milan in second place. That might be the biggest gap I've seen in the Serie A. Um, for a championship, Tw 29 point gap on the second and third place teams. That's incredible, man. And as for the Eredivisie, Ajax back on top, six clear of PSV uh, to win the Dutch top tier uh, this season. Might have won the Champions League, but weren't champions of Portugal. Uh, Porto in second with Benfica in third, but the winners this year, Sporting Lisbon, uh, finishing five clear of Porto to win the Liga Portugal. And as for the Scottish leagues, I always say, you, you can only check after the first phase. You just got to assume that the team that were in pole position won the whole thing, and that was Rangers. Two clear of their old firm rivals, Celtic. Aberdeen quite close to top two this season, though, but Rangers Rangers on top this year. As for La Liga, Barcelona finishing 21 clear of Real Madrid to win the Spanish top tier this season. Sociedad and Batiste making it to the top four with Bilbao in fifth and Athletic Madrid dropping a sixth place uh, in this year's La Liga season. And the final two, as we always end with these, Turkish Super League saw Galatasaray run out winners of the Turkish Super League. 12 clear of Fenerbahce with only one loss all season long in the Turkish Super League. And as for the MLS, it's just got started, but it's Minnesota United 
jumping up to an eight-point lead uh, in the MLS with both conferences shown uh, this season. And so, as we end the season with one final look at the squad, well, we'll begin with the team management section here. Uh, I have to say, once again, as is always the case when you're doing an RTG, the season just got better as the season went on, and it's why we had a great middle of the season and survive comes through. This is not the team we started off with at the start of the season. I mean, obviously, with the signs we made, such as Spree and Grev and Trappia, but just in general, the growth of the team was really nice all season long. Bond now up to 78 overall. Uh, great growth on Femi up to 77 as well uh, and Dennis going up to 78 too uh, and of course the Haynes injury was the, the negative in the second half of the season but yeah this team grew nicely this season but also as well I really like the new signs we brought in Ryan McGree in January I thought Tapia was fantastic all season long as well Panzo was really solid when stepping in for Owen as well and no doubt about it to take the next step up which will be next season hopefully top 10 that's what I'll be targeting and an outside shot of 7 4 6 place well, there's no doubt about it. We're going to need a new striker. Defensively, I had no concerns. I didn't have any concerns this season. I knew we'd be fine defensively. Bennett grew three ratings with the Golden Glove as well. But again, so frustrating how EA is so critical on goalkeepers. 15 clean sheets and 37. Youngest Golden Glove winner at 17 years old. And he's in bad form, apparently. Really? I don't think so. But um, but yeah, defensively, we were great this season. So I've got no qualms taking to the new season. We don't need any new defenders, man. Dennis grew three ratings to 78 overall. Again, growing nicely at left back. Panzo was a really good pickup on a free transfer as well. Growing three ratings too. Especially stepping in when Owen went down towards the end of the season as well. So... Great little signing on a freebie there after his release from Nottingham Forest. Maybe we'll sign a new backup centre-half, depending on what we do with Owen. As Tyler, as you see, the captain also grew three ratings this year to 75 overalls. His growth continues to be slow, but also steady and gradual and nice to see as well. Owen, in the end, as we did predict, would go down a rating. He was up to 73 overall, but of course the injury saw him go down to 72. So I might possibly, possibly consider loaning out Owen for next season because, again, his growth has been quite slow, but also the injury as well. I might possibly loan him out, keep Jonathan by starting CB alongside Binden and then sign a new third choice because I'm not sure how much faith I've got in Benge, but I'll think about it. I'll think about it. It'll be a shame to loan out Owen because I really like him starting alongside Binden with the injuries and the slow growth. It might be the best thing to do. I guess we will see. CJ was an all right pick up as a backup right back, growing 2-74 to 74 overall, but Reggie Bond, team of the season, only man we had in the team of the season and deserved so as well. 15 clean sheets in 36 games. He's got five assists as well in the top 25 for assists this year. And of course, the lone goal was that game winner at St. James's Park in the final minute as well. What a way to get your first Premier League goal, man. The name's Bond, Reggie Bond. And if people didn't know it then, they do now. This guy is a wonder kid. He's going nowhere, man. He's the future of Reading Football Club. Uh, Luke this season, great in minutes off the bench, man. He managed to grow two ratings as well. Kickstarted his growth after not growing at all last season. That's great to see as well, despite his advancing years now up to 71 overall. And again, he just came off the bench, chased down loose balls, and he can do that with a good defensive stats, the relentless play style, and the stamina as well. Every team needs someone like that off the bench, but also starting. And that man that started for us was this guy, Renato Tapia. Only the one goal all season long from that corner, but 32 games out of 38 played in the Premier League. Didn't grow a rating, probably won't again between now and the end of his career, possibly at 30 or maybe you'll grow one or two but relentless warrior in that DM area with a great stamina the great strength played him at CB a couple of times and he was fine there as well what a pickup he was man seriously one of my favourite signings of the season Lewis farewell to Mr Wing scored the first goal to save a free kick I think the first time I've ever done that scored a free kick last season as well but this year Barely played at all. We knew his minutes were going to be limited. We even tried to sell him in the summer, but he said no. Uh, no, Southampton said no, sorry. And uh, in the end, no clubs put in bids for him. So in the end, stayed until Norwich approached him on a free transfer. Let him go to Carrow Road on a free transfer. Thanks to the service, Lewis, in the three years. One of the OGs here, but now on his way to Norwich as his time at Reading comes to an end. Uh, Gurev, nice little pickup from Leeds, my Andrew. Two ratings, one goal. And what a goal it was as well against Palace in the 26 games he played. And still getting better as well. He's been a smart little pick 
pickup from Ellen Road, man. Solid pass through the ball. I, I still want that stamina to increase against the 80s if I'm getting there, but it's passing so good, man. As a DLP, this guy retains possession so well and never gives it away. As for Charlie, I don't know what to do with him, man. He played 33 league games, but most of those came from the bench. He did get an assist, yes, but only the one rate in growth. And I just don't know how much better the son of Robbie can get. He's now approaching his mid-20s. He only went up one this year. And of course, he's not good enough to replace either Gruev or Tapia for the most part. And oftentimes, I prefer bringing Luke off the bench than Charlie. I don't know what to do with Savage, man. Do we just try and cash in with only one year left in his deal? Or do we just extend it and try and convince him to be a squad midfielder? I guess we'll find out in the summer. Patrick's going 10 out on loan right now. So that's excellent to see. And that might help me make the decision on Savage when Oakley comes back growing nicely. But what a signing Riley McGree was, man. What a pickup he was. Seriously, four goals in 12 league games and an assist as well. He may not have grown a rating, but I'm pretty sure his growth is going to kickstart for the new season. We've now got in that high defensive work rate. That's fantastic. What a signing. Even though he came in in January, I'd probably call him my signing of the season, man. He was absolutely fantastic when coming in on deadline day in January. What a pickup from the Borough. Uh, Johnston only did one goal in the assist all season long, but of course that goal came at Villa Park in our crucial 2-1 win to uh, cement safety. Uh, don't think it'll get much better, if at all now. So he's only been here for the year, but most of those 27 games off the bench might try and sell him in the summer. I guess we'll see. Especially with Felix coming back from loan from Coventry, growing four ratings. But the man we discussed earlier at St. Pauli, bottom placed in the Bundesliga. A tough old season, but... He's grown. He's grown brilliantly. He's learning from the losses up seven ratings to 70 overall. I believe he's got another year there in Germany, but... I might try and bring him back for the new year instead of him playing two league of football and have him challenge Harvey Nibs for a CAM spot. So when you look at the stats here, his natural position is CM. But if we were to convert him to CAM, it would only take two weeks and he'd probably go up two or three ratings based on these stats right here. In fact, even LM might do him, do him good. But I'd say CAM personally. So yeah, would that be in the case? I think when he comes back in the summer... I'm probably not going to loan him out again. I'm going to convert into CAM, hope for an overall spike, and then say, right, you've learned, hopefully, a lot of lessons in that Bundesliga season. Now take Harvey's place. Speaking of him, no goals in the Premier League all season long. Five assists in 35 games. Did grow two ranks, 74 overall, and he's still getting better as well. But again, for next season... I might have him drop into the bench and coming off the bench as a six man. We love Harvey. It'll be a till he retires, no doubt about that. But I think, yeah, for, for next season, I'm probably going to say we take a rotation squad role and let Wilhelm take over as a starter. I guess we'll see. Camera probably going to leave in the summer. Only three games all season. I'm just playing garbage time. And it's got two years left in this deal. But yeah, he's not getting any better. I'm probably going to let him go. Especially with Mensa growing out on loan right now. Up four ratings with Norwich at Carrow Road 69 overall. And Chinidu has grown nine out on loan at the MLS as well. Amazing, amazing growth there. And this is why I always say it's better to loan your players out than it is to start them in your team. It's crazy, man. Uh, as for Femi, he got five goals and four assists in 35 league games, growing two. And he's still getting slightly better as well now in his mid-20s. He was solid. Solid first year in the Premier League. And he's been solid since we arrived here at the Medeski Stadium. So yeah, got no plans to replace this guy on the right-hand side, man. With that left foot, really, really like him. And as for Alfonso, like we discussed earlier, got the exciting prospect tag. We'll try and loan him out for the new season. But as for Oz, man, tough season in the Premier League, just didn't adjust to life in the top tier. He got me four goals and two assists in 26. It wasn't disastrous, but for a number nine, it wasn't enough. And I think for the new season, he might have been championship player of the season. But he was certainly not going to get in the team of the season in the Premier League. No doubt about that. I don't want to sell him. I like him at least coming off the bench with the pace. But there's no doubt about it. For the new season, if he keeps the number nine jersey, he won't be starting as our new number nine. No doubt about that. We'll be looking for a new striker in the summer as the league's lowest scorers this year. We need someone I can rely on up top. We didn't have that this year. And put it this way, McGree, who came in in January, scored as many goals as he did playing the whole season. That speaks for itself. As for Esprit, he scored our first goal in the Premier League this season. Season four in total in 28 games. He was all right to be fair on that left hand side. A decent start to the season, then kind of calmed down a little bit, but did grow three raisings and is still getting better as well. So, no plans to replace him either on the flank with him on the left and Femi on the right. And as for Kelvin, yeah, 13 games in the league, didn't score all season long. Again, all of the games apart from on the final day came from the bench, but I have to say, I think. 
I think his time at Reading might have come to an end. I like him as a squad striker because he literally never complains, but there's no doubt about it. Even at 23, he's still getting slightly better, but I just don't think he's quite at this level. I guess we'll see what happens in the summer as JJ has grown five out on loan in Romania. But that will do it for today's episode and the season finale of the Summer Career Mode, guys. So big thank you for watching the end of Season 3 and Season 3 as a whole. If you have enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day. I will return in the new season with the start of Season 4 where hopefully we'll have a bit more money to work with for the summer transfer window after working with a small budget for this season and no doubt about it. I think most of our money will be spent on a new strike. I look forward to it though, man. New season comes next. Have a great day, much love, and I'll see you for a brand new season in the summer career mode very soon.